So what's new? Hmm. We hit 20,000. Coming up today on episode 20 of the Fans First Talk Show, we're going to reveal our G.I. Joe Classified HasLab wish list. Then we have a G.I. Joe Classified 20k giveaway. This is our triple shot package. And then we'll wrap up with a special G.I. Joe unboxing and review. First up, we expect that Hasbro will announce this year's HasLab campaign for G.I. Joe Classified during Yo Jo June. So let's get into this. Recently, Hasbro conducted some focus group discussions concerning G.I. Joe. Participants were shown digital renders of possible future vehicles for a HasLab project. They were also provided pricing options for each vehicle as well as possible tiers for each. There were three renders shown for each vehicle, a vintage design, a modernized design, and a modern day realistic design. There were four vehicles shown in total, two for the Joes and two for Cobra. All vehicles were either for the land or air. There was only one air vehicle, the other three were land vehicles. As we've reported previously, Hasbro is not giving much consideration at this time to sea vehicles, as they feel that land and air vehicles are easier to engineer and more aesthetically pleasing to display. Additionally, air vehicles are the cheapest to make. We can share with you the four vehicles which were discussed. First, the Cobra Rattler, which was the only air vehicle under consideration. Next, the G.I. Joe Mauler. Next, the G.I. Joe Snowcat. This is one of the most popular vehicles out there not yet made for classified. And finally, the Dreadnought Thunder Machine. And this seems like a very obvious one just due to its popularity. Of these four options, the cheapest was reportedly the Dreadnought Thunder Machine, which if the information is true, means this was reportedly under $200. This would line up with what we've reported in the past, as the Dreadnought Thunder Machine is small enough to be a retail option like the Vamp. Including some extra figures as tiers obviously results in a higher overall price point. These four vehicles are the only known options being considered for the 2024 HasLab. Once again, as we've been saying for a while now, we believe this year's HasLab will end up being the Cobra Rat Read into that however you want. As always, Hasbro can pivot to another option at any time and for any reason. The decision is ultimately up to them. First and foremost, Hasbro's top priority for any HasLab project is that it fully funds successfully. Beyond that, they want it to be as profitable as possible, and for collectors to be happy with it so that there's more excitement down the road for future projects. All four vehicle options would be popular regardless of whether they're Haslabs or not. Of these four, the Rattler would be the biggest in size just due to its length. That said, it would be similar in length to the Dragonfly. We can all have our own opinions, but the Rattler has consistently been the most popular G.I. Joe vehicle with collectors according to our own polls and research over the last three years. At this point, it would be a big surprise if Hasbro decided to choose any other vehicle over the Rattler this year. But let's turn this over to you. If you had an opportunity to sound off about these four vehicles, what would you tell Hasbro? And what would you tell them that you want the tier options to be? Let us know in the comments down below. On a related note, in a recent episode of the Fans First Talk Show, we shared some of our predictions and spoilers for the G.I. Joe Classified line in 2024 and 25. We discussed some options for the Cobra Rattler's tiers for a possible HasLab project. Here's what we had. The Cobra Rattler would obviously include Wild Weasel as its pilot, and we would expect that this includes a flight stand as well. For the tiers, we believe that three strong options are the Flight Suit Baroness in her blue suit, a Cobra Air Trooper, and a Cobra Para Viper. Let us know if these options make sense to you, or if there might be another tier option that you'd prefer instead. That said, as confident as we are that the Cobra Rattler is going to be this year's campaign for the HasLab, there is another great candidate, isn't there, Dex? Yeah, there is. So before we reveal what we hope comes next, either after the Rattler or instead of the Rattler, let's remind ourselves the unofficial rules of HasLab. It should be a dream project, the item should be too big for retail, and so far what we've seen is four characters attached to the project. And one of them is a female. Yeah, so for the Dragonfly, there was Glenda, and then for the Hiss Tank, there was the Hiss Tank Gunner. So for the purpose of this wish list, we're going to continue that trend with four figures and at least one of them being a female. And the number one vehicle we want for Haslab is going to be the Snowcat. Oh yeah. In short, the Snowcat is perfect for Haslab because, number one, it's too big for retail. There are some people out there who are saying that the Snowcat is going to be released as a retail item this year, I don't think so. 
is really big. Let's remember that when the snowcap first came out in 1985, it held a lot of figures. Yeah, it carries up to 10. Yeah. That's a little too big for retail, so I think we can agree that if we ever do get a snowcat, it's gonna be through HasLab. The G.I. Joe Snowcat is a rugged winter-themed tank designed for cold weather missions. This Arctic Assault vehicle is equipped with tank-like treads for navigating through snow and ice, making it perfect for harsh winter environments. Accessories included with the Snowcat typically include a missile launcher with projectile rockets, ski pedo missiles, and storage compartments for both gear and weapons. And maybe add a rotating machine gun to it? That'd be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. They don't have to do it exactly the way it came out in 1985. They can play around with things, and this Hasbro team does like to change things up, and so does the HasLab team. But one thing that we know won't be changed is the driver, and that's Frostbite. So we'll propose that he's included here as well. From that point on, there's going to be some tiers with extra characters included. So I've got three suggestions in mind, and Dex, I think you've got a list of your own. So Dex, why don't you get us started and tell us which character is number one on your list for the possible tiers of a G.I. Joe Snowcat HasLab. Number one, Arctic Trooper Snake Eyes. He would be amazing, all of his like accessories and everything. And I know that they've made a lot of Snake Eyes, and I've complained about that, <laughs> but this one is different. It doesn't even look like him. It's a completely different figure. Totally. I agree. That guy's loaded out with, first of all, the winter gear, plus I think he's got some, uh, what is it, skulls around a necklace or something like that? Almost like Quinn and uh, Shadow Tracker. And then, man, that guy looks wicked. I like it a lot because it's like an improvement of the Commando Snake Eyes, and I like the jacket that he comes with, like the collar and everything. And it just looks amazing all around with all the colors. And after we add Snow Job and then the Snow Serpent as well, I'm totally on board with you there, Dex, with the fur collar. A lot of this could probably already come from existing characters. I'm with you. We have so many Snake Eyes out there already, but wow, if we added one extra, I know a lot of people are waiting for version four of Snake Eyes. I think you're right here, Dex, this would be great. And it's a special character that would be attached to a HasLab, just like Cobra Commander was with the His Tank. Nice idea. Number one on my list is a character that we didn't get, Big Ben version three. This is the Arctic version of Big Ben. A lot of collectors out there missed out on this Walmart exclusive that first came out as part of the Night Force line. So what better way to have a redeco version of a character that a lot of people couldn't get? That's why I want version three of Big Ben to be paired up with the Snowcat. Dex, who's number two on your list? My number two is Arctic Bazooka. I think that this would look amazing. I really like this version of him. I like it more than the original, in my opinion, because it looks more realistic. And I don't think that you would be wanting to run around with just short sleeves in the jungle. That's a terrible <laughs> idea. I think Bazooka looks amazing, though, with all of his accessories. And with the coat on him would be awesome. And he kind of looks the same way as most of the characters in G.I. Joe the movie did in the Arctic scenes. I could see that, and I think you're right. That might actually make this more appealing. There's already two bazookas out there. Who's looking for a third? But if you give us something that's completely different from the first two, like you're suggesting, that might be the way to go here. We always see a lot of redecos, especially with new vehicles. So I think you might be onto something here, Dex. Number two on my list, Quinn. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Quinn, but I think he'd be very suitable for the Snowcat. I can already hear it. People are saying, well, don't hide a figure behind a HasLab. But there are different versions of Quinn, and I think that for a lot of people out there, what we've heard is that the version 2 is a little more popular than the first version, the winter one. Maybe we get a jungle version as part of like a Tiger Force if they're still doing that, or just in general. But the winter one, you could release that separately on its own for classified, but you could also put it here with the Snowcat. So I don't think it's likely to happen, but I'm gonna suggest that they do that. My third pick would be Arctic Shooter. I think that this character would look amazing. All the accessories she could come with and it would just look overall amazing. And also she could come with a Winter Steel Core helmet, which would look really cool. Oh, yeah, we're getting a lot of Steel Core helmets now and that's a great idea, Dex. What about an Arctic version of the Steel Core helmet? I like it. Actually, now that you say that, I'm thinking maybe Hasbro's just going to give us a handful of the Arctic versions of the Steel Core Troopers and call it a day. Let's hope that doesn't happen, although that wouldn't be a bad idea for one of these characters. And Shooter's a female, so then they would have a female one in the line. That's not a bad idea. I wouldn't write that off at all. We already have the Night Force Shooter. I'm a big fan. Some people aren't. So yeah, Dex, I'd love to see a new shooter. The, I thought the first one was great, so I would love to see another one, especially a winter version. Sign me up. 
Now my third and final suggestion for a character for a tier of the Snowcat is an Arctic version of Bomb Strike. Now Haslabs are a great way to introduce lesser known characters and Bomb Strike is from the Devil's Due era of G.I. Joe just like Agent Helix and Shooter so I do think that she's probably on the way at some point and this could be a good way to introduce her because there probably won't be a lot of demand for her just on her own but you throw her in with this and I think people are going to be very surprised and again we're introducing a lot of G.I. Joe fans to newer characters. So that's what I would prefer, an Arctic version of Bomb Strike. She's a wicked character. I, we'll get into that in another episode, but what I think is probably more likely that Hasbro would do would be to give us an Arctic version of Scarlet, right? Seems like something they would do. Now, if they did, it's gotta be a play on the retro Scarlet with that great head sculpt. What do you think, Dex? Scarlet, yes or no? No. I do not think they should do Scarlet, though, because for the Dragonfly, they had Glenda, who is very similar to Scarlet, and it's pointless to have two figures of Scarlet, pretty much, for two different Haslabs. You might as well put another character in to introduce them, or just have more styles. You really don't think that Hasbro would do something like that? No, because if they're doing someone else really? like Snake Eyes... <laughs> they're still talking about Hasbro here? I don't think it's a good idea if Hasbro has two characters that are both repaints in one Haslab. They're not, people are not going to be happy about that, especially when they're spending like 300 or $400. So that's what we think here, and that's our suggestion for our wish list item for a Haslab, the G.I. Joe Snowcat. I think it's a great vehicle, one of my favorites, and Dex... I already know that you're a big fan of the Snowcat yourself. Yeah, I love my little Jada Nano figure of that. It's awesome. Yeah, totally. And let's get more of those Jada Nanos. We got one three-pack of the little mini vehicles. Yeah. With the, the Vamp Mark II, the Hiss Tank, and the Snowcat. And then that was it. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see a lot more of those. But again, we'll talk more about that in a future episode. But in the meantime, let's hear your ideas. First of all, do you want the Snowcat? Second of all, would you buy the Snowcat if it was a HasLab and it was a little more expensive? Because I think that's honestly the only way we're ever going to get this into classified. And also, what characters would you want included as tiers? We know that Frostbite's a given, but who else would you want? You heard my ideas, you heard Dex's ideas, now we want your ideas. So post them in the comments below and let's get into this. I'm sure that some of you guys even have way better ideas than either Dex or myself came up with here, and we want to hear them and I'm sure everyone else does too. Next up, it's time for our big triple shot giveaway. Now Dex, we've hit a major milestone here. Over 20,000 subscribers in just two and a half years. And just in the past month alone, we've already gained over 700 new subscribers and counting. Together with all of you, we built a community that's not only passionate about G.I. Joe, but also dedicated to creating a positive and engaging space for fans of all ages all around the world. And that's thanks to all of you tuning in, liking, and sharing our content. We wouldn't have reached this milestone without each and every one of you, and we're so grateful for your continued support. Your enthusiasm and engagement have made Viper Island the most popular and most watched G.I. Joe program across the world. Now, most G.I. Joe channels on YouTube are monetized, and that means that they're pulling in money through YouTube. The problem is, lately a lot of them are now trying to squeeze every last cent out of their own audiences without even giving anything back. Now, I don't know about anyone watching out there, but to me that sounds a little one-sided. Unlike them, we believe in giving back to our viewers. So we're doing something special, the Triple Shot 20K Giveaway. We're giving away three special G.I. Joe classified releases to a lucky viewer. It's our way of saying thank you for being the best fans out there. Now let's see what we've got for the Triple Shot 20K giveaway package. First up, Snake Eyes and Timber. This is the Alpha Commandos 2-pack. One of the best, it's a classic, and all of you guys out there voted this as the best figure set of 2021. Baroness and the Coil. And then Breaker and the Ram. Yeah, now this is a great set. Dex, I think that's one of your favorites. Yeah, I really like this figure, of, especially the Ram Cycle. The machine gun on it is amazing. I love just spinning it around, and it's amazing. It won't fall over. The traction on it's really good, and the f head sculpt on him is amazing from Pretty one of good. the first vehicles in the line. Yeah, and that's a Cobra Island set. This is a Cobra Island set here as well, the Baroness and Coil. On the back, you get the Cobra Island map. Same thing on Breaker and the Ram there, plus all the nice artwork on the side. Why don't you show it on that, Dex? 
Breaker in the Rim, one of my favorite classic sets, and it's a vehicle set as well, so you're getting a twofer. And this Baroness, this is the classic black outfit version, so right there, great one. Three figures, two vehicles, and one pet. So in total, Dex, tell them how many entries we had. 492. That's crazy. And this is our way of paying it forward, giving back to our viewers, and saying thank you for helping us reach 20,000. To pick a winner, we're using the website commentpicker.com. It's doing all the work for us. All I need to do is push a button, and the website will randomly select a winner for us from all of the entries. All right, here we go. And the winner of the 20K giveaway is... Is it going to be... Jason oh. Webb. There you go. Congratulations, Jason. I'll reach out to you, get all your information, and send all three of these over to you. Now, first of all, thanks to everyone who submitted an entry for this contest. We love doing this sort of thing. Now, if you didn't win, we've got some great news for you. We'll be doing this again. We damn sure will be. And next up, tell them what time it is, Dex. Mail time. Alright, so we have a new package. Let's get right into it, Dex. It's the action yeah. soldier! He looks so cool! There will also be an action marine and action pilot coming sometime soon as well, so we can look forward to that. Now this one here, the Action Soldier Infantry, features a contemporary military design. This is like a modern day soldier. There are 25 accessory pieces including a figure stand. The Ma Deuce. This is the M250 Cal Roadblock Signature Weapon. Oh. He looks so good. This looks amazing. Very cool. I love the packaging too, right here. The lower half of this figure, which comes from originally from Rock and Roll. It was later reused with both Ripper and Mutt. And as for the torso, it's Stalker's torso, arms, hands, and these were all reused with Dusty as well. The Mod Deuce, this should have come with Roadblock from the very beginning. We got the Gatling gun, which also comes with the Ram Cycle, and I think uh, Tiger Force Duke as well comes with that as well. Yeah. This had to come with the Roadblock. I'm not sure why we didn't get that, unless they were just trying to do something different, give us a modern look on Roadblock initially, early in the line, but wow, this is a very nice weapon. Heavily detailed, and wow, we just have a pile of accessories and weapons right here on the table. This is crazy to get this much in a G.I. Joe classified release. Don't you think so, Dex? Yeah. Now I see that you're already attaching all of those pouches onto his torso. What do you think of that idea? I'm not a fan of it at all. I think they should just make a bulkier vest. It looks like they can pop off any second. There's like also a four centimeter gap in between them. They're not really holding on? No, they are, but look. Oh, just barely. The pegs aren't too long, yeah. Now this will be a problem with Doc as well because this torso I believe is the same one that's used for Doc. So I like the idea, but the execution might be falling a little short. They might have to work on this a little more, but I am surprised that the pegs are this short. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're right, Dex. These are just gonna fall off pretty easily. Might not be the case for everyone, but definitely what we're seeing here. So while Dex is getting these weapons ready, I'm gonna let you know where a lot of the reuse for the weapons and accessories came from. First of all, there's this machine gun with a bipod. Comes originally from Big Ben. Then there's also an AR machine gun, and this one also comes from Big Ben. Then we already told you there's some reuse from Rock and Roll with the figure. Well, that holds true with the accessories as well. The hand pistol and the walkie-talkie both belong to Rock and Roll, and this backpack belongs to Outback. But I don't mind the reuse when it's done well. All of these go really well with the action soldier, so I'm fine with all of it. And this helmet, this comes from Grunt. Now we already mentioned that the web gear contains five pouches which attach, and this is the same as Doc. His machine gun is amazing. It has this little like knob right here that can flip back and forth, and when it's up, it can clip onto the backpack, and it's no really, way. and it actually is super smooth, and like it's on nice and tight. And then when you pl uh, put it down, then it can go inside the holder. Yeah, that little tripod. The tripod, and then it's right there, and then you can angle it around. Nice. Oh wow, that does have nice articulation for sure. Now there's a pouch on the front of his poncho here, and part of the cloth. You lift up the flap. You can actually use it as a pocket. That's pretty cool. They look fantastic when they're all geared up. Yeah, totally loaded. 
And I think it's the contemporary military design that sells this figure. Yeah. So this could even be popular with people who don't even collect G.I. Joe. What would you rate this guy? I'm going to give this an 8.5, and that might be on the low side for a lot of people out there, and I understand that, but 8.5 is still a great rating. It's not blowing me away, but it's great. Love all the accessories, though. How I, about you? I would give it a 9.5. It's amazing. I love all the guns he has, all the accessories, how he has, uh, like, his backpack is really nice, the dog tags, all of his accessories and everything. It's amazing. Now, how do you feel about all the reuse? Does it bother you, or are you just I glad to have all of it? I barely notice it, so I don't really care. Okay, so there you go. I feel the same way. Even though a lot of these already exist for other characters, it's well used here. So, yep. good reuse is always a win. And this is essentially a new version of Stalker or Rock and Roll. And the cool thing is, because this is based on Stalker, which is also the same torso as Dusty, it has the same peg for the neck. So you can put Stalker's head on here, or Dusty's, and probably a whole lot of other characters as well if it's the same size. So that's another great use of this as a troop builder. You can have these guys be just anonymous generic soldiers, or you can use some other G.I. Joe figures, swap the heads, and there you have a brand new version of all of those guys. I like that a lot. And now it's time for the question of the day. How many of the infantry soldiers did you order? And what's your opinion of these guys? Do you like these as much as Dex and I do? Do you think that there was a miss here? And let us know what you would give this out of 10. Dex, any last thoughts? It's an amazing figure and I love his weapons that he comes with. The weapons are amazing. I agree. Love the figure. I thought I would like the accessories even more than the figure, but now that this is in hand, I like the figure even more. I might even bump that 8.5 up down the road. Once we've had time to really get into this figure, might cross the nine threshold there, we'll see. Overall, great figure, great accessories, nice packaging. I think this is one of the best releases this year so far. This might be an early candidate of 2024. For figure of the year? Yeah. Definitely should be in the running, but I think there's going to be some stiff competition. So, hey, got to outdo this one. I agree with you, Dex. With accessories, though, you can't outdo this one. Yeah. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode, we'd appreciate it if you hit the like button and share this with some fellow classified collectors. We'll see you guys next time. My name is Liam. You can follow me on Instagram at Viper Island. For all things G.I. Joe, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. If you want to support the show, smash that like button. Until next time, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting, have a great day, and yo Joe!